I apologize if there's some noise in the background, but I am recording this in the computer lab and there's another class on the other side of the room. But what can you do? Today we're going to talk about GDP. GDP stands for the Gross Domestic Product. Its definition is the total market value of all final goods and services produced in a country over a period of time. Now, I divided the definition into three parts for a reason, because each part is an important part of the whole. The first is the total market value. What this means is when we measure the GDP, we always measure in terms of money. It will always be a dollar amount. Um, we're adding up the value of everything that's been produced um, in a country. And so when we do that, we can't really add up three apples plus five computers plus two cars and come up with a number that makes any sense. Instead, we have to convert them all to their monetary value. And then we can add that up, and then we can see what the value is of everything that we've created. It's of all final goods and services. So there's two parts to that. First of all, that we're including all goods and all services. Okay. Also, that we're only including final ones. What that means is we don't count what are called intermediate goods. For example, when Toyota buys a tire for its factory in San Antonio, Texas, it is buying that tire to place in a car. When you buy that car, you're paying for the cost of that tire. If we counted the that tire once when it was bought by the firm in by Toyota in San Antonio, and once when you bought the car, that value of that same tire would be counted twice. So we only count it once when it's a final good. So basically when it's reached its final stage, it's being sold to the end consumer. And then it's everything that's produced in a country. What that means is we're only counting things that are made on American soil. Um, we're not counting things that um, American businessmen who are working in other countries, we're not counting what they're making. Um, but we are counting the things that foreign businessmen are doing here on, on our soil in the United States. There's two ways to figure out the GDP. The first way is the one that we're going to focus on mostly in this class. I'll, I'll show you the second way, but you won't need to memorize it in the same way as you will the first one. The first one is called the expenditure, expenditure approach. And remember, expenditure just means spending. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to divide our economy into four basic categories, four sections of the economy that spend money. So the first one is our household section, and those, that's you and me. That's all the households that are in the, in the country. And we're going to look at everything that they buy, and we call this consumption. And in our formula we're going to form, it's going to be represented by a C. So that's why I have a picture of a mall there, is everything that's being bought that mall is counting as part of the GDP in the consumption category. G stands for government or government spending. Now, the government buys things just like we do. What kind of things does the government buy? Well, as in, in that picture, the government may buy police uniforms or motorcycles, guns. It also can buy food or um, it can build building materials for schools and roads. There's plenty of things that the government spends money on. And so we're going to count all this government spending so we can count all, those, all of those goods um, and services. IG stands for gross investment. Not gross like yuck, <laughs> but gross is in total. And so that means we're going to include the depreciation or what's called consumption of fixed capital in this number. And gross investment is all business spending. When businesses spend money, we call that investment. Remember in economics when I talk about investment, I am not talking about um, putting money in the stock market or financial investments like that. I'm talking about buying capital goods. That's what businesses do. And so we're going to count all the money that businesses spend. One play, There's two things, caveats I need to make here. One is that there is one kind of household spending that does count in investment, and that is when a household member buys a brand new home. So never before lived in, newly constructed home, that is considered an investment. The other thing that's considered an investment that you might not realize would be excess inventories. If you've ever worked at a job where you had to count up every single thing in the store, and mark, the reason why they're doing that is a, 
they can count this as what's called an investment because even if they haven't sold it off by the end of the year they can still obviously sell it next year so we want we can count that as an investment into next year and that way we can count all those things that were made this year on this year's GDP and then we got um, the rest of the world and that's the net exports now this number is actually two parts it is a, the addition of all the exports and the subtraction of all the imports. This is actually a negative number we're going to subtract. Because remember when we counted all our consumption figures earlier, um, some of the things counted might be some stuff we bought from other countries. And so we need to take out all those imports because we're not going to count that. We only count things made in our country. So if we, the XN stands for net exports, and that means exports minus imports, can we ever have a negative number here? Well, yeah, if the imports outweigh the exports, we're going to end up with a negative number, and that often does happen. Add all together this aggregate spending, this total spending on final goods and services, and we get our formula, C plus IG plus G plus XN. And that is our formula to figure out the GDP through the expenditure approach. The other approach is the, is the, um, income approach. Now this one you won't actually need to memorize step by step, but what we need to remember from what we learned in our circular flow earlier is that all in, all spending becomes someone's income. And so we can look at the other side of the coin. Instead of looking at what, everything we spend, instead if we look at what everyone earns, we can have the income approach and we can figure it out that way. It's a little more complicated. We look at rent um, and wages. That's payment for land and labor. We look at interest. That's payment for capital. Um, then we look at all the um, profits, the payments for entrepreneurship. So that has several parts to it. All the proprietor's income, um, all the corporate profits, such as corporate income taxes, dividends, and undistributed corporate profits. All that comes to a number that we call the national income. This is all the income earned through American-owned resources. To that, if we add the indirect business taxes, the consumption of fixed capital, that's another phrase for depreciation, and, and subtract out the net foreign factor income, that will give us our GDP. It's a lot more, a lot more steps to figure out our GDP, so we're just going to worry about C plus IG plus G plus XN. That's when we're going to memorize. Some important details to the GDP. What is not counted? We do not count intermediate goods as we mentioned earlier. We do not count financial transactions, um, buying stocks in the stock market, because nothing new was created. If I give you $100, it's not counted, nothing new was created. Uh, we don't count non-market transactions. If you've ever babysat for someone and not reported on your taxes, it's a non-market transaction. Uh, we don't count illegal transactions, um, the drug trade or prostitution trade. Those things don't get reported anywhere, so they can't get counted. We don't count used goods. Used goods were already counted in the year that they were created. We don't want to count them twice, so we don't count them. Two things about interpreting GDP. Um, there are two terms we use um, for GDP, nominal and real GDP. Nominal GDP is the prices, um, the GDP expressed in the current year prices. Real GDP is when we calculate the GDP using the prices of the base year. Now, why do we have to do that? Well, oh, let me go back. Let's imagine this is our nominal GDP. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to change it, but this 18,300 should be 15,300. So I'm getting mean comments about how I can't do math. I just wrote it down wrong. Um, let's say that in 2010, let's just say we had only two products in our economy, TVs and pizza. In 2010, we sold 10 TVs and 20 pizzas. And in 2012, we sold 10 TVs and 20 pizzas. But in 2010, the price for TVs was $1,000 and the pizza price was $10. Giving us a GDP of $10,200. In 2012, the prices have gone up to $1,500 for TV and $15 for pizza. So now our GDP is $15,300. Well, wait a second. The GDP makes it look like our standard of living has increased, like we have more. But if you look at the numbers, we really don't, do we? We have the same amount. 
And so the nominal GDP can be misleading, so we need to have what's called the real GDP. And this is to avoid the problem of changes in prices distorting the value of current production. So we're going to put this year's quantities in the previous year's prices. What real GDP doesn't measure? It doesn't measure our population growth or our GDP per capita. Um, that's actually a better measure if we do the per, per capita or per person measure because um, let's say our GDP grew by 5%, but our population grew by 10%. Would we be better off? No. It doesn't count leisure time. Um, and so it doesn't value that if we take more time off work, our GDP does not increase, but yet perhaps our standard of living does as far as the value that we place on that. Volunteerism, environmental concerns. I want you to ask yourself what probably happens to, an, to the environmental quality of a country as its GDP starts to rise, as it starts to produce more, manufacture more. And social deterioration, which doesn't count the effect of that because let's say um, one thing that's really good for GDP but maybe not good for society is divorce. Because when you divorce, you need two toasters and two kitchens and two beds and all these things that you only needed one of before. And so it's great for GDP, but probably not very good for society. To figure out the GDP, we need to have what's called a price index. And we're going to use price index later as we start learning about inflation. But it's a measure of the price of a spe specified collection of goods and services called a market basket in a given year as a, compared to the basket of a price of an identical basket in a reference year. So just for visualization's sake, imagine you go to the grocery store, you put a bunch of items in your, gro grocery sh in your cart and you check out and it gave, they give you a price of, I don't know, $300 for everything in your cart. And then you go back a month later and you get the exact same goods, you put them in your cart and you go to check out and now it's $350. Well, we can see that prices have changed, haven't they? What we can do is we can create a ratio to show by how much prices have changed. And so a price index, to figure it out, it's the price of the basket in a specific year divided by the price of the same basket in the base year. To figure out the real GDP, then you could take the nominal GDP and divide it by the price index in hundredths, and that will tell you what our real GDP is. It's going to deflate it. It's called a GDP deflator. It'll deflate it to the previous year's prices so that we can see how much um, how much output changed rather than just how much price has changed. You might want to pause it here and take a few minutes to figure out which of the following transactions would be included in the GDP for the United States. And why or why not? Go back through your notes or go back through the video if you need for help.